in the room. She is an award-winning international speaker, author, performer, and a global trotter. She left India at the age of 17 for higher studies in Singapore, where she developed the dreams of traveling the world, inspired by some German fellow mates. She tra started traveling with near to little money, but her passion made her not give up throughout the journey. She lives in Costa Rica in Central America and is in India for the launch of the book Life is Abracadabra, which is magical grave well stories from across the world published by K House, a penguin publisher. Throughout her trip in, in, to India, she has received so much love for her book Life. The book has was a bestseller at the World Book Fair in Delhi and International Book Fair in Kolkata and has sold over 1,000 copies in India alone. A book is endorsed by two-time former president of Costa Rica, who is also a Nobel Peace Prize laureate, two-time Guinness World Record holder, international best-selling authors, America's biggest progressive radio show host, and many more renowned personalities across the world. With this, I welcome Besa Kisa. Yet, 
we can draw inspiration from others who have walked their dream path and we can take lessons from that so we can also manifest the dream, the desire that is in our hearts. So that's what I say destiny is something you create and it is created out of a feeling of excitement. So when you look at two paths in front of you, which of the two excites you more? Which of the two you think will bring you more joy? So that is how you recognize this is where I have to walk. Always you have to tune into your feelings. And a lot of times what happens like our, uh, our parents, our neighbors, our teachers, everybody is there to tell us what we should do. And sometimes it can be overwhelming, right? As a student, you're young, you're growing up, you don't know the world. You've just come out of your cocoon and you're here at university, you know, figuring out what you want to do. And then your mom will come and say, oh, you have to be a doctor because you'll make a lot of money being a doctor. And then your dad will say, no, you have to be an engineer. And your teacher will say, oh, no, you have to be an IT girl, uh, uh, professional, you know. And uh, deep inside you, a rock star is sitting. So how will you give birth to this rock star if you listen to everybody? You will be lost. You know, uh, I draw this analogy of a painting. Let's say you are painting a picture, okay? And uh, you know what this painting is going to be. All the colors are inside you. But as you start painting this picture, someone comes and smashes, splashes the picture with a big blob of red. Oh, your painting is spoiled. And then another person comes and, you know, puts another color on your painting. And then another person comes who throws a big blob of black. And before you know it, it's not your painting at all. Then you are miserable and you don't know why. You are doing everything that is expected of you, but you are not happy because you are not following the path of your heart. And what is that path? You have to figure it out. And you will be guided. If you are open to it, you will be guided towards that path. And how it happened for me, I will tell you. So you will know that no dream path is easy. Every path has its own challenges. However, the path of the heart will bring you joy, whereas the other path will give you diseases. So I'll also, you know, uh, talk about that later. So uh, before I move on, I just want to know if you, anybody here, has a dream, who has already, you know, thought about it and would like to share it, or even if you haven't thought about it, if you have an idea what you want to be or what you want to do, or 10 years from now, 20 years from now, where do you want to see yourself? Anybody wants to share? Come on. I want some boys to speak. Anybody? Okay, fine. Let me go a little more uh, into the topic, then maybe you will open up more. So as I said, the bigger you can dream, the more of your soul you let in. Because dreams are the container of, of your soul. You know, we are not just human beings. We come here to live the human dream. And I can't emphasize how important it is to have a dream. Because if you don't have a dream, you won't know what to manifest. And most people are afraid to dream big because they don't want to be disappointed. Now what do I mean by that? Sometimes we have a dream and we know there is no way to uh, manifest that dream. So I am not even going to dream it. And that is really sad because when you have a dream, you watch a movie or you talk to a person or you listen to a song or you uh, attend a lecture and uh, you feel something. Oh, I want to do that. but. Uh, there is no way what, where you are and where you want to be, there is no connection. And then you get disappointed. You are like, oh, I don't know if I'll be able to do it. 
and then your parents say don't take the risk you won't make money with that drink and you fall back and you listen to all those guardians who tell you what to do and what not to do and at the end of it 5 years 10 years 20 years down the line you still look at that dream with you know like it's it's a seed that did not take birth right so at this age it is the perfect time to mold because your minds are malleable you know i always give this analogy reality is not solid if you think of a stone prison where every day the same thing is happening let's say 100 years ago or even a thousand years ago reality was like that like a stone prison you wake up every day you go to work you do what is expected of you you come back home you are tired and at the end of the day you have no time for your passions no time for your dreams but today life has changed so much in the past 20 years in the past 30 years since the cell phone uh, era has started reality has become a liquid so liquid is something it can mold you can change it you can affect your reality whereas solid you can't change it so easily right so think of your reality as something that you can mold something that you can change at any time in your wonderful human imagination because imagination is creation and when you have the courage to change your dreams to change your reality the universe will meet you how and i'll tell you how that happens okay so uh, they already gave a brief introduction about me and i will uh, slightly delve into my story and how i started Uh, so you will know how impossible dreams can be made possible so this is the abracadabra way and a story of which dreams are made of now how many of you know the meaning of the word abracadabra i think i already showed it you've heard the word abracadabra yes what is it some focus focus magic illusion delusion You know, when we were kids, we used to watch these uh, Aladdin stories. You know, Aladdin would rub his magic lamp, and the genie would appear. Abra ka jarna. Or uh, uh, Ali Baba would go to the door, and he would say, "Open Sesame," and the door would open. Abra ka jarna. Can this kind of Abra ka jarna magic happen in real life? What do you think? Yes or no? No. I hope at the end of this presentation your answer will become yes. So abracadabra means I, I shall create as I speak, I shall create as I believe, and I shall create as I do. And I don't want to say it. Imagination is creation, and the word abracadabra comes from three Hebrew words: ab, ben. Ruach Hakadosh, which means Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. So in Christianity, they have this thing called Trinity. You know, Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, which encompasses all of life. If you look at life, everything in life is divided into the Trinity. They are essentially the same thing, but we experience them as three separate things. For example, hot, cold, and then we have room temperature. Then solid. liquid gas it's the same element which is just changing its state as and when you change the energy you give more heat energy you get water from ice you give more energy you get steam vapor from ice so this is exactly what i'm saying reality is that reality is that trinity you change the energy and you change your reality because we and the stars are made of the same thing atoms molecules when you change the energy the whole composition changes okay so uh, as you know i am a globe trotter i have not just traveled but i have lived for years from asia to africa to europe to south america to north and central america and right now i live in costa rica 
Anybody knows where Costa Rica is? Yes? No? You, have you even heard of the country? Okay, someone says Brazil. Anybody else? Central America? Who said Central America? Okay. Anybody else? Any idea? Europe? Okay, uh, I know you all must be watching the World Cup cricket, but Costa Rica has a very great football team. So if you were watching football, you would know more about this country. Uh, anyways, it's a country in Central America just above Panama. You must have heard of Panama, right? Uh, you all might have heard of the Panama Channel. So Panama is the end of North America. And the Panama Channel connects North America with South America, creating new trade routes. So Costa Rica is just above Panama and above Costa Rica is Nicaragua. So it's a Caribbean country. You, you might have heard of the cruises, you know. Uh, so all those cruises, they all touch by Costa Rica. We have the Caribbean Sea, we have the Atlantic Ocean, the Pacific Ocean. And it's such an exotic country. It's so beautiful. Uh, you see the cover of this book, this blue butterfly. Uh, this blue morpho butterfly is a very rare species which you can find in Costa Rica. And uh, the color blue is very rare in nature. So you can find some of the most beautiful flora and fauna there. Maybe because of the volcanoes we have there. It's a small country. We don't have uh, military. It's such a, such a peaceful country. It's never too hot. It's never too cold. We don't have fans. Even provision of fans in houses. That's how wonderful the temperature is throughout the year. And a lot of expats from other countries, they want to come there. That's why getting a Costa Rican visa is like even harder than getting a US visa. And uh, so I just want to say that in all these countries where I lived, I was staying with local families, eating their food, contributing to their economy, working in those countries, you know, wearing their costumes, taking in their culture and often I had to extreme, I had to navigate extreme realities and belief systems. And what do I mean by that? I lived in some of the most dangerous countries in the world. I was very, very young and I was alone. And uh, I didn't have anyone to protect me. This is when I developed a lot of life skills, you know, because if you do not, if you do not expand the horizon of your thinking, your experience of life will become very small, very limited. And you know what is life is infinite. So when you expand the mind, the thinking, that is when all magical possibilities can happen. So uh, I come from a very, very conservative family. I was 17 when I left India. And uh, being a Bengali from Calcutta, a very patriarchal culture. I remember I was not even allowed to um, go out alone. You know, my, my parents were so protective of me uh, that they said, oh, uh, you are a girl, so you should not go out alone unescorted or just hang out with your friends because your friends will spoil you. <laughs> so uh, that is the kind of culture I come from. And uh, after class 10, actually, uh, I did my CBSC exam. I had really good grades. So I was following what my parents were pushing me to do, to excel in exams. And I really did that. I was all India topper in English and a lot of uh, other topics. So I won this scholarship to study in Singapore. So I left India. And I went to Singapore, I did my 11 and 12, what we call junior college uh, in Singapore, and then university. And uh, in my very first year of university, I had a crippling back injury. And uh, I had literally become immobile. So before that, I used to be an athlete, I was a dancer, I was in my college basketball team, I was always doing sports and marathons. And uh, you know, suddenly one day I could not get up from the bed anymore. 
and my excruciating journey to self discovery started there so i remember after like one year two years of suffering the pain in my back used to be so excruciating that i felt a butcher was you know cutting me with a knife and there was nothing i could do to alleviate that pain no matter how many painkillers i took no matter how many medicines i swallowed or how many physical physiotherapy sessions i took that was when i had suicidal thoughts i didn't want to live this life anymore because i couldn't imagine why god the god that you know i grew up my life praying to would put a young girl of what 20 21 that was my age at the time through so much suffering what had i done to deserve that i was just alone with my emotions and with my misery i could not dance i could not climb stairs i could not open heavy doors i could not even bend to put on my pants it was that hard and i really wanted to take my life i wanted to end the pain and i didn't mind becoming a vegetable going into a coma or you know something i just thought that it will end and one night midnight i did something crazy i did something which uh would have killed me but it caused a spontaneous healing and that was my first encounter with magic because suddenly i realized that i had broken a physical barrier in my life which changed the energy like how i was telling you change the energy solid to liquid i had done it unconsciously at the time because i was so desperate i had nothing to lose i was not afraid anymore and the day i traded fear with faith that day my whole reality changed so this book which just got published in india called life is our kadabra the first story in the book talks about my spontaneous healing at the time that then i thought it was a personal miracle you know there was nothing that i could use to explain what had happened to me but today i know it is called epigenetics and uh, you don't have to be at the behest of your genes i was in singapore i was in a career that i hated i was not happy and i was not in touch with my dreams and desires so i became you know what i say a vibrational match to that back injury and because i was so miserable you know i had the best life all my friends back in india were like envious of me oh you are in singapore you have a scholarship you know uh, you are in the best career you are in the best university you must be so happy. and the opposite was my inner reality and when that spontaneous healing happened i realized there is just so much bigger to this life than what i was experiencing and then when i just tuned into that higher frequency that bigger dream the magic started happening so i want to talk about the reality of dreams a little bit that your dreams will manifest when you are willing to go the distance you cannot stay in your comfort zone and you think that my dreams will be handed to me in a silver platter it is why we are here in life living this dream you know uh, uh, walking this path because we are meant to navigate those challenges it is only through those challenges we come to have an experience of ourselves otherwise we don't know who we are we don't know what great feats we are capable of until we have the courage to step into the shell of our dreams and of course as i said before this path of dreams is what excites you is what brings you joy is what gives you happiness even if it is very difficult to achieve it you will find bliss while walking the path so it is a path to passion and purpose and as you live that passion 
you will be defined in a new way you will like now my life is unrecognizable when i was in singapore i studied computer engineering and i was you know probably if i had graduated i you know started working i would be in a form you know coding and programming which is great you know someone who is meant to do that will excel in that but it was not my dream and what was my dream i didn't know i had to figure it out and how i figured it out the universe sent me help so as i said you can turn your biggest fear into your greatest glory when you have the courage to step outside of your comfort zone and look towards your dream so this is how it happened for me i was also learning german at my university and uh, our uh, university teacher used to uh, invite the foreign german students who would come to our university for an exchange program for a semester or two and uh, those germans were big travelers now i'm talking about a time when there were no google maps there was no uber ola there were uh, you know no uh, online platforms no influencers no bloggers to tell you that you know you should travel you should do this none of that existed i don't know if you have even heard of lonely planet it used to be a guide book this thick guide books that used to sell like you know books like this that if you want to go to a country you buy a lonely planet guide which has all the streets all the restaurants all the hotels all the tourist spots listed in it and you use it as a guide book to go to an unknown country that you have never seen that you may not even have heard of and you explore so now it's so much easier you just put on your map where you want to go where is the nearest restaurant and you get it but in those times like i'm talking about 15 years ago 20 years ago all this technology was not available so these german students whenever we would have vacation they would just buy the map of an unknown country buy a map you know those atlases we used to have it's not like google map and just with a map they would go to an unknown country and uh, they would explore sometimes they would go alone backpacking and uh, uh, they would meet local people they would uh, stay in their houses eat their food share their culture and then come back with the most amazing stories and i was in awe i was like that reality like in india we don't have that culture we don't do it we don't explore the world where we have been put in we remain in our shells and it doesn't matter you don't have to be a globe trotter but still when you travel your concept of reality expands so i'll come to that later so these german students were like that you know they were just traveling going alone not for one or two days but for, for months and uh, i was so inspired by that i wanted to do it but i couldn't do it alone i couldn't start alone so i started with some backpacking trips across asia some asian countries with them uh, in groups and i learned so many things about myself you know when you travel alone in groups you have to manage your own finances you have to understand what is giving private space to the other you know you have, you learn so many things and uh, when i came back i wanted to travel more like i was still in asia and i wanted to leave asia i wanted to go to europe germany german whose language i was studying and uh, all my german friends when they left singapore they invited me to visit them in germany and i would go with them to the airport the changi airport in singapore and i i used to see of each one of them and i used to tell them wait tell germany that i am coming soon or you know you you uh, prepare for my welcome i am coming and my dream was so strong that i used to imagine these scenarios in my head but i neither had the money nor the opportunity europe was too expensive for a foreign student in singapore and uh, uh, three fourth of my money was spent in physiotherapy so uh, i had very little savings very little money and it was 
not even near to where I could manifest these dreams. But my dreams were so strong. I used to take my book uh, during exam times, go to the airport, wave at all, all the planes that would go towards Europe, and I used to just imagine that dream. And before I knew it, I won an all expense paid trip to Europe for a whole month. And how that happened is again another story in the book. And it was a very, very magical story because so many synchronicities came in the way to help me achieve that. And I didn't even know when the synchronicities were happening that it will lead to my biggest dream. Everywhere I went, I was invited. All my German friends were inviting me to their house. They were taking me around. They were showing me the local scenarios. They were cooking for me. I was cooking for them. It was so beautiful that I realized that the best things in life, you can't buy. We work so hard to make money. I mean, it's great you make money. You have a good relationship with money. But don't let money stop you from living your dreams. When I came back from Europe, I wanted more. Honestly, at that time, I didn't know I wanted to be a world traveler. I wanted to be a globe traveler. But I knew I didn't want to stay in Singapore and I didn't want to spend my whole life there working in a you know, computing job. What lay ahead of me, I didn't know. And that is when I was invited to a talk like this at my university. Again, I believe the universe sent it on my way. Uh, I attended a talk sitting there just where you are sitting like this and there was an Australian lady uh, who was giving a similar talk and she talked about changing the world and making it a better place and uh, I was so inspired by that talk <laughs> that I realized, okay, I want to do this. Uh, you know, it was I said actually, the, the same organizers today who have organized this event for you. Uh, and when I listened to that talk, I uh, wanted to join ISEC and I wanted to travel the world. And uh, then, you know, a lot of things happened actually. Each, each, at each moment of my, at each step of the dream, there were so many obstacles. Like, for example, I had a bond. You know, I had a full scholarship for six years in Singapore with allowance, even my flights were paid. So I had a bond to serve six years in Singapore and nobody can escape that bond legally, you know, because uh, Singapore government spends so much money on us. They want us to uh, continue that uh, work and, you know, uh, contribute to their economy. I didn't want to stay there. And then something so magical happened, you know, I said the universe, the universe clock is so precise, it will deliver your dream at the right moment. So something so magical happened and I think I was the only person who managed to escape that bond, bond legally. How? Yes, good question. How? I read your lips. So there's a story in this book, it's called Freedom from Bond. Often we get bonded to these things. It's this bond, you can use it as a metaphor in life. You know, we have this and that and we are caged in these bonds of life that we don't have the courage to escape it. But my desires, my imagination, maybe I can say, I can come back to the beginning. My imagination was so strong that one by one, the magic was happening. And it was the same with ISEC, like when I attended the talk of ISEC, this lady inspiring and everything, I knew I wanted to join ISEC and I wanted to explore the world. So I approached the ISEC uh, president in our university, National University of Singapore, and I said, hey, I want to join. So she said, uh, the interviews, those days we used to have an interview to join ISEC and she said, the interviews for this semester is already over, come back next semester. And that was my last semester, I was graduating, I didn't have another semester to come back and uh, I had to be a student to register. So I was like, but I am graduating and she said, 
I'm sorry I can't help you because the interviews are done by special people who are invited uh, from different backgrounds and uh, they will do this interview for you and if they think you are capable, they will let you join. So I was disappointed. I felt just when, just when I knew what I wanted to do or I thought I knew, I figured out, okay, this is the path where I want to go. The door was shut on my face. But I didn't lose the dream. I remember I used to sit in my hostel room, staring at the ceiling, like a hamster in a, in a wheel, you know, going up and down, never able to escape that cage. And I thought, oh, I have to apply for a job. All my batchmates were applying for, for a job. And I didn't want to do that. What I wanted to do, I didn't know. So I was procrastinating. I was postponing the job application, this, that, without knowing where it will lead me. I knew it would only lead me to more misery. Because after I graduate, if I don't have a job, I won't have money to live in a foreign country, and it will be very difficult. But something inside me, you know, was like so resistant to the whole process. Anyways, the Isaac door was closed. And I was going through my fi final semester. Then suddenly one day the Isaac president called me and she said, hey, we are having an interview in Malaysia. Do you want to go there? If, if they select you, then we can uh, enroll you into Isaac in Singapore. And you know, she didn't think that I was an Indian and I needed a Malaysian visa to even go to Malaysia. Because Singaporeans don't need it. For them, going to Malaysia is like you just cross the border, you are in another country. And uh, the interview was the next week. And even for me to apply for a Malaysian visa would have taken at least three months or, you know, two months. There was no way I could have made it on time. But again, as life would have it, just the semester before I was organizing an entrepreneurial summit uh, at my university in Singapore and we had delegates from all over the world including Stanford and other big universities and uh, this summit was like for a whole week and at the end of the summit there was an opportunity to go to Malaysia. So I had gone and taken a Malaysian visa just to travel with them and I could have taken a single entry Malaysian visa because I did travel with them but something in my mind told me like take a multiple entry uh, visa for which I had to pay extra because there may be another opportunity in the future. And because I had that visa which I had taken the semester before, I was able to go to Malaysia. I, was, I gave the interview and I joined ISEC and then I traveled the whole world to ISEC, Asia to Europe to Africa to South America to Central America, backpacking, living the best dreams, you know. I can't, you know, even put it into words, the kind of things that I experienced. And uh, because, see, sometimes some things the universe gives us in a way that we cannot conceive. We cannot know the path. We cannot always know how to get there. But we all have an inner compass. We have an inner guidance system. If we if we stay true to ourselves, if we stay true to our desires, true to our dreams, the path will be revealed to us, one step at a time. The whole path will not be shown to you because then the magic, the adventure will be lost. So, after coming back from Europe, surprisingly, I didn't want to go back to, you know, any of the developed countries. I just wanted more <laughs> adventure. So, I thought, okay, the first country that I can match through Isaac, I will go there. I applied to a lot of places and uh, it was a country in Africa that uh, responded to my application and I was like, oh, let me go. And I was so young, my parents were like, you know, no, we don't want you to go there. <laughs> it's, uh, it's dangerous and it's this and that. And uh, I was really alone in my decisions. And, uh, I just told my dad that, you know, human beings live in Africa, so I want to go there because I'm a human being. <laughs> and that was it. He understood, although, although my mom, she was so reluctant, you know, typical conservative mom. I just said, they are humans. 
If you can cross the human barrier, you can do anything. No, I have lived all over the world. I have lived with local people, eating their food, wearing their costumes, communicating through gestures and symbols because I often wouldn't know their language. And uh, I used currencies whose value I didn't know. For me, money, currency was just like paper. Every time I would change country, the currency would change. And uh, I didn't know the value of it. And uh, at some point, I got tired of always converting to Indian rupees to see how expensive that is. You know, we Indians do that a lot. When we go to uh, US, we buy dollars, we are like, okay, this is one lakh rupees in India. Oh my God, it's so expensive. But in that country, it is two rupees. Or it is five rupees, you know. So the meaning of currency changes as the barriers between continents you can overcome. So uh, this started happening and at the same time I would be navigating danger. Like I was robbed at gunpoint. Just a couple of years ago the house where I lived in Costa Rica was robbed. I was facing six men with uh, rifles. My landlord died in that robbery. And uh, you know, I faced these life-threatening situations so many times in my life. And every time I was saved by a force that I could not conceive. So this robbery happened in Costa Rica and before that I was in Venezuela, before that I was in Nigeria. And I knew that I survived Venezuela where they loot, shoot you before they loot you. I survived Nigeria where I literally lived in the ghettos where gang fights used to go on you know, and I would be this. I was a white in Nigeria. They used to call me Oibo. You know, Oibo means white girl, like white boy or white girl. And uh, my skin, skin tone is very really dark. But I was a white in Nigeria, so I was a target. So being a Oibo, I was a target. Everybody thought I had dollars in my pocket. And you won't believe most of the days in Nigeria, I didn't even have the money to eat. And these, all the locals, you know, they were waiting for an opportunity to rob me. The bus fare for the locals would be 50 Nairas. For me, it would be 500 Nairas. They just look at your face and the price, price increases. So you can read these stories in, in the book. But remember, I'm an Indian. So I fought my way, I negotiated and I fought in every way. <laughs> just to save money for food. And even so, there were days that I went hungry. I didn't have money to eat food. But they were the best days. They were the most beautiful times of my life. On hindsight, I say this. All those challenges, all those experiences was preparing me for the larger work I was meant to do in this world. Like today I'm standing here in front of you, inspiring you, hoping that you will find that inner voice and you will find that path to your passion, your purpose, whatever it may be. It could be engineering or it could be becoming a rock star. But this journey, you know, it was at every step. What do these challenges do? They prepare you for the bigger life that you were meant to live. So never shrink your dreams into something so small that it doesn't challenge you anymore. So then you are not living the adventure of being alive. If you want to live the adventure of being alive, you have to make your dreams so big that even you don't know where that dream begins and where it ends. And it doesn't matter. You will be guided on your path. You know, I used to be so shy at university. I, when I was learning German, I wouldn't even open my mouth because I was so afraid I would make a mistake and my teacher will find the mistake and it will spoil my image. So we, we hold on to these fake images. You know, we don't want to talk. I was so shy. I wouldn't open my mouth anywhere. And today I can stand here and talk for hours and hours inspiring, motivating, whatever. And that journey, you know, it's an inner journey. 
on the exterior you read the stories you read the physical stories but the change is happening inside in your soul in your heart and you are looking at possibilities like i literally have stories like catch me if you can if you've seen that movie so many times i have been in situations totally stuck there is no possible way to leave you know and something magical would happen and i would find myself out of it it's like a matrix you know when you're inside the matrix you are in that programming you know and uh, you are told what to do what to think what to say how to dress how to react how to behave and when you are a woman especially from a conservative culture everything that you should do or you should not do is defined for you breaking those barriers and going for your dreams happens through the challenges that you face as long as you don't quit you will find the solution you will find the answer and these signs these synchronicities these opportunities that i say the universe sends you i am not the chosen one the universe sends these opportunities to everybody but we don't know how to read the signs we don't know how to figure out oh i just thought of this and look i see a sign post on the road and it is exactly what i was thinking just now what is that that is called a synchronicity it matches the external reality matches what is inside your head so you know this is a quantum universe it's not just all physical with stars and planets if the universe is expanding it is because you are expanding in your mind otherwise if the universe is everything that is what is the universe expanding into all the space all the matter all the material is inside the universe so when they say that the universe is expanding what is it expanding into so there must be a space outside the universe for the universe to expand right but if space is outside the universe then the universe is supposed to be everything that is space and matter so what is the universe expanding into i say the universe expands every time your mind expands the horizon of your thinking expands when you put the possibility inside you will see the opportunity outside i just made that up when you put the possibility inside you will see the opportunity outside i can end with that
here from Bombay. And uh, until yesterday morning, I didn't know that I, I would be able to make it. Uh, even though she organized it for me, I told her, I called her up yesterday and I said, hey, I may not be able to come, I'm not getting the plane tickets, I have so much here to, you know, finish. And uh, I made it, I took this long flight and I came here last night, she hosted me thankfully uh, at her place and uh, 3am, uh, I arrived until 4am, we were talking and uh, when she heard my stories, she said, don't bother about the presentation, just tell people your stories because people will connect with it. And this is not just my stories. I say these are humanity stories because if these magical possibilities can exist for one person, it exists for all of humanity. It's about how you tap into the magic. We are there in 120 plus countries and uh, the way we work is uh, we facilitate exchanges. We send people abroad for an exchange. You can either go for an internship where you are getting paid or you can either go for a voluntary project where you are contributing towards the sustainable development goals or you know maybe just working in a company. So the way it works is it starts with you working in other country for maybe 45 days to 3 months to 6 months and a year and uh, that is what we do. So the way you can do it is either you can directly just be a part of us and go for an exchange or you can be someone who is facilitating this experience and giving an experience like someone from ISEC gave it to her because the way like we work is let's say there is a person uh, which country would, would be your dream country, let's say. Which country? Dubai. Dubai. Okay, let's say there is someone who wants to go to Dubai. So the way we work is we find the possibility for you in Dubai and there will be a person who will come for an airport to come over there they find an accommodation as well and they help you with the visa. Which is the first important thing yeah. for Indians, you know, yeah, we need visa even for transit country. Yeah, exactly. So they will help you with the visa, they will help you with the insurance, they will help you with the accommodation food and there will be a person who will be getting you all over the place as well. So we are the ones who, you know, help you uh, travel the city. We'll let you know about like, the food, the places, and at the same time, we'll be the one who will be there to help you over there. So that is the way I said talks. So either you can go for an exchange, or be the one who's helping someone who's coming to India from any country. Yeah. So that is what we do. And what the one thing that we believe in is change begins with you. And you can begin the change by joining us. Yeah, thank you so much. Yeah, uh, I just want to add to that. You know, a lot of famous personalities like Bill Clinton and Kofi Annan and uh, some Polish presidents and all, they were icicles. I don't know if you knew it. Um, and uh, even if it is a short term internship, like I did really long internships, you know, for years. Even if you can go for two months to an unknown country or to, to US, UK, wherever you want to go, even if you go for a short duration, you will learn so much. So uh, use this opportunity, uh, take up an ISEC internship or join ISEC where you can interact with the foreigners who come to India to do ISEC exchange programs and uh, you interact with them and you see how everyone's reality, everyone's world is so different from yours and that's how you can learn so much. Uh, definitely my life changed because I joined ISEC. Uh, and uh, it doesn't matter if you want to be a world traveler or not. You have to explore the world where you have been put 
by God or whatever higher force that you believe in. Six, six, six. See, two plus four is six. Uh, June is six, and then twenty-four. 